Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's talk about the algae patty. So we've had almost two full months to evaluate them and we're going to get into some of these colonies and show you just how they're doing. Also, on one of these colonies, we're going to throw two patties on it and that way we can see if they'll still be able to work with the small hive beetle situation. Now, I've seen small hive beetles walk across these things, but I've never seen a single larvae in any of them. I've never seen a any desire by the small hive beetle to do anything with these patties. So that is a big plus. Um, there is something that um, I've noticed, and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But let's uh, let's start checking some of these colonies. Also, um, wanted to, to mention in one of our previous videos, the last video we did on the algae patties, this colony was not eating them well. The other three have been eating them great. I haven't noticed any problem with consumption except out of this hive. But the brood pattern, pattern was looking terrible. The bees, um, they weren't locked in. If you've worked bees a lot, you'll notice that a good healthy colony that's doing everything that it should, the bees are busy. They're locked on the comb. This colony was runny. They want, they're just, they just wanted to run around a little bit more, which told me that something was wrong. We requeened it with a brand new queen of ours, and things are looking a lot better, and they're eating the patty just fine. All right, so this one is the only one left that's actually a 2019 queen. The other ones are now 2020s. And I've already been into this one. I threw in a little bit of syrup feed earlier, and I thought, well, let's do a video. All right. Now, as you'll see, there's bees down here working this syrup over here. And they're able to get down in there and, and suck it up. Now, there is one dead bee I see over there, but who knows how that dead bee got there. I might have already been down in the bottom of that feeder. Um, the bees, I want to show you this really quick. Let's see if I can get some bees on this tool. Right, we're going to stick these under the syrup. All right, they floated to the top. Now let's watch them. Most drowning comes from one or two reasons. There goes one. They're pretty much all working on climbing out. They pull each other in. So if you have a big clump of bees that are on the lid above it, and, th and this is what happens a lot is beekeepers will have a ton of bees down in there getting away in the hot weather, and they're just trying to find a way to get away from the brood. You could have half a pound of bees down here. If you pour syrup in that, they'll drown like that. So you got to make sure that it's pretty empty. And one of the other ways, if, if you're using like heavy syrup, that's like honey thickness, it's a lot harder for them to pull themselves out of. This is one to one or thereabouts. And so it's easier. Also, if it's extremely cold syrup or sugar water, whatever, that lowers their body temperature very quickly. But typically you don't get hardly any drowning with these feeders unless you have a ton of bees already in there and you're pouring on top of them. Now if you have one or two bees that you pour on top of, I've seen it before where they'll float up to the top and walk out, but it's usually when you have bunches of bees and they're holding on to each other trying to work their way out and they just pull each other down and drown. Um, primarily when people see a lot of drowning bees is when the colony is sickly. Bees that are weak from viruses and have too high of mite loads drown in these things like nobody's business. So this colony has no issue. I mean, they're, they're going in there. They will have all of that syrup gone, I promise you, by tomorrow at 10 a.m. So about 12 hours. 16 hours, whatever. <laughs> One of those hours. Let's get in here and see what the brood's looking like. Now, the reason I'm feeding these bees, they have some food in here, but it's not super heavy, and we want to keep things going forward. A gallon of one-to-one -one doesn't really put on that much weight. This frame's got a decent bit of weight on it, but I like them to draw it out. Look at all that right there. Now, I don't feed this every week. This colony doesn't need it. All right, let's see what the brood looks like. And we're going to throw two patties on this colony right here. They're a little bit antsy. I've already been in here today. It's really not ideal to get into a colony back to back. All right, look at that right there. That'll work just fine. Now we've had a decent bit of pollen come in. I'll take it. I will take it. And that other frame right there looks really good. 
Um, I will say though, overall, um, probably the only thing about the Healthy Bee Patty um, that I've noticed, and I think it makes sense, and this is just my opinion, is that it actually is a little bit slower to brood, um, get bees to brood up than um, the Ultra Bee Patties that I'm using. I'm using hundreds and hundreds of pounds of Ultra Bee a week, and um, you know, so I have a good idea on how it works. I do feel like this um, does not build them up the same way. That doesn't mean that it's not necessarily healthy though, and that's where things get complicated. You can't just take something right at face value, and in two months is not enough time to really evaluate a whole lot. Um, honestly, we don't have a time to be scientific with everything that we do. The eye test will give you a pretty good idea, but let's think about it this way. Why are the small hive beetles not attracted to these patties? Well, it's probably not because of the algae. I doubt that the beetles care whether the protein comes from algae or pollen or soy or bananas or whatever. Those carbs and, and the proteins, that's what they want. But what's probably keeping them away is the essential oils and stuff in the patty. However, there's a lot of time in these things, and I've used products like Apa Life Var and Apa Guard. One thing that you'll notice as you're killing mites with those products is that it suppresses brood rearing to a degree. And it a lot depends on temperature, and I believe that that's why I'm not seeing quite the same buildup as Ultra Bee with these things, is because of that really strong smell from all that stuff. They still can eat these things, no problem. But the colony runs off of pheromones. The queen knows where to go off of pheromones. All, all the communication is through that. If it's slowing that down by 10%, mm -hmm. the communication process, then that's going to ha have an impact on the colony. However, is that necessarily bad? If you're trying to eliminate mites, sometimes lowering the brood popu uh, the amount of brood that you're producing is going to expose more mites because most of the mites are in the brood. So in combination with a treatment could this be good and then you're not burning through as much nutrition during those periods i'm breaking these up just to show you that you can we're going to throw two pounds on here and we'll check back later and we'll check some more colonies but just um that's all i wanted to say on that really is just the fact that you just don't really know it might have some positive gains because there are beekeepers it's very popular especially in other countries outside of the US to actually cage the queen or remove her and create a split. Um, well, there's multiple methods. Some people just cage the queen, shut down brood rearing entirely. Once there's no brood, they do an oxalic acid treatment and it's a very high level of kill. And then they let her rear again. Some, of, some people like myself make a split that breaks that up and gets them a, a brood break. There's a lot of different ways, but so what I'm saying is it, just because you're slowing the bees down doesn't always mean that that's bad. But if you're trying to get your bees to brood up heavily, that might be an issue. Just think about it. All right, so there's, there we go. That's a lot of patty right there. I have yet to have thrown two pounds of patty on any colony, especially of this size. Okay, now I've already, ah, I forgot to throw that strip in, I'll have to do that later I guess. I've already gotten into this one, look how they're eating. I went ahead and threw this one in there about 10 minutes ago, just so you can see that they're already going at the patty. I only threw one pound into this hive. You can also see the syrup to the left, and they're, they're going at that also. You know, so that is, um. It's obviously they're eating it. So, oh, there's a small high beetle right there. Not anymore. All right, we're just gonna kind of peek into these really quick. I wanna peek into this one because the, I wanna see how the new queen's doing. Um, she's been in there for probably two weeks now. Just see what the results are. I'm just gonna smoke these bees down. There's a small hive beetle. There's two small hive beetles. So, we, you know, we got small hive beetles in here. This is a lower year for the beetles, but we, we still have plenty of them. 
but hey, that looks a lot better than it did before. You can see the stain from the patties that we've been feeding. Now, I will say when I introduced this queen, I stopped feeding patties. One, because they don't eat them as good. And two, I didn't want the, ph the pheromones on her introduction to be blocked by these um, strongly scented patties. So just keep that in mind. I think that's a, a, a wise idea. I don't like using essential oils or anything that smells strong. When I'm doing anything that is especially like a, a split or a queen introduction, something that requires some pheromones and, and, and it's a more delicate. All right. Let's see how this new queen's doing. All right. So here's one frame. There's some emerging brood in here. That's Maybe she's been in here longer than two weeks. I can't remember, to be honest. It might be three weeks now. This might be her first offspring. It probably is. I honestly can't keep track of everything that's going on right now. That's Laurel's job. <laughs> What a, what a terrible job she has. I, I give her too much. So, so look at that brood right there. You can see they're capping this all the way out to here. There's larvae. So they're really starting to look a lot better. Bees are locked in. New queen's doing great. So sometimes it doesn't matter what brand of, of sub that you're using, but they will not eat correctly if something is out of balance in the hive. Um, happy bees eat. The only time they stop eating these supplements is when there's just so much awesome real stuff available that they just don't have time for it. But if they can get both, a lot of times they will if they have time to work them. Alright, so I'm just going to throw a pound on this one as well. And a pound on, I guess I already did that one, so we're just going to um, throw that right there and um, voila. So. I'm going to definitely feed this one. If you'll notice there was hardly any capped honey anywhere on this. And there's some foundations. I didn't want to feed heavily during the queen introduction period because I didn't want to plug up the combs that they did have. But so, one thing, there's a, there's a lot of bees down in here. You know, I'd say probably 200 or so, 300. Just smoke those bees and get them to run on out of there. Sometimes they just won't do it. And I've got some floats. Sometimes they'll propolize those down there. So you got to loosen them up. And I, I left my feeder cans at my dad's house. So I'm using a bucket today. And it kind of works. We're going to fill this one up. But look at all those bees running out the top there. And look at all these bees floating right here. You know why most of them aren't climbing out? It's because they are more concerned about getting that food in their system. That's what they want. Bees don't rationalize that, oh my goodness, I could be drowning right now. They're just thinking, oh my, here's food. Let's take it in. And they're really more like computers, biological computers that respond to stimuli. And it looks like I might have crushed one earlier when I got my hive tool down in there, but that's a queen cage I left in there. Oh. So anyways, but look, the bees are already climbing out of here. Once some of these have gotten more in their stomach, and just keep in mind, just because you're seeing one or two dead bees in there does not mean necessarily that it's because they drowned. There are thousands of bees, tens of thousands of bees for me that die in my bee yard every day, and some of them die in the hive. They'll fall, they'll just be weak, they'll get down in there and they'll die. It happens. It's just a matter of math and statistics. So hey, these patties, um, you might need to check them out. Um, they run cells occasionally, so just um, keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you should use them, I'm not saying that you don't. These videos are just so you guys can see kind of what they're doing for us before you buy and maybe it'll help you make a more informed decision because a lot of beekeeping products, we have no gauge to be able to determine um, what it is or, or what it's going to do for us. So anyways, thanks for watching our videos and if you've used them, let us know how you liked them or, or didn't like them below.